Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to start Chapter 10, Center Manifold Theory. Now, Center Manifold Theory is probably the most difficult topic of this course, but it brings in a lot of almost everything that we've learned up to this point. And it touches on one of the more important areas of contemporary research in all of science and engineering, dimensional reduction techniques. So what does that mean? Well, imagine you have a system that requires a large number of dependent variables in order to describe it and to predict its future evolution. Now, what's a large number? I don't know, hundreds, thousands. Well, suppose it were true that only a few of those dependent variables were required to get an accurate solution of the behavior and evolution of that system. That would be quite a feat. And that's what I mean by dimensional reduction, reducing the number of dependent variables to describe the physical system of interest. And this is really a hot topic there's a lot of ad hoc methods that are used to um, achieve this goal. Center manifold is a rigorous mathematical method, but it has its limitations. And we're going to learn about that in these lectures. So I want to start off by motivating the idea behind this method as I'm going to develop it in this chapter. And like any method, I'm, I develop it up to a certain point. But once you have a tool, it's natural to say, ah, well, how can I generalize this to all sorts of different circumstances? And I'll mention a little bit of that in the end. OK, it's a nonlinear method, but I'm going to motivate it by what I think is an easy to understand linear setting. So x dot equals ax, y dot equals by. x is c dimensional, y is s dimensional, c for center, s for stable, and a is a c by c matrix that has a property that all of its eigenvalues lie on the imaginary axis. b is an s by s matrix that has a property that all of its eigenvalues have negative real part. OK, and suppose, well, it's, it's clear that um, the origin is an equilibrium point. So suppose we are interested in the nature of the stability of the origin. Well, the origin is non-hyperbolic, so we're going to need to get a little bit of information. But it is clear, a little bit of extra information, it should be clear that stability of the origin is governed by this lower dimensional, C is smaller than S plus C, lower dimensional linear system. Why? Well, because we can write down the solution of, of this system. Formally, we have to compute these e to the at and e to the bt. But we know, because of the nature of the eigenvalues of b, they all have eigenvalues having negative real part, that the limit is time goes to infinity for any initial condition, x naught, y naught. This goes to 0. OK, so the idea is the y components of any solution are going to de decay to 0 exponentially fast. We know that. In fact, the system is decoupled, 10.1. So it makes sense that all we really need to study is this lower dimensional linear system in order to determine the nature of stability. OK, in particular, stability, asymptotic stability, or instability of x equals 0 in the lower dimensional system, x dot equals ax, implies likewise for the full dimensional system, x dot y dot. All right, now. It is natural to ask if we could generalize 
this type of dimensional reduction approach to nonlinear systems. And this is one of the things that invariant manifolds give us. Remember, I've, well, I've said invariant manifolds can divide up the phase space into qualitatively distinct regions. Uh, trajectories cannot cross invariant manifolds. And if you look at all the examples we've developed earlier in this way, you can see that they lead to a decoupling of the system and lower dimensional descriptions. And that's what we're going to see with the center manifold theory. So now we need to describe the setup, and I will do that in the next lecture. So bye for now.